Hello and welcome to Education Talk. Now, this is your best program on education on television. I am Wilma and today we will be looking at child prodigies and top university admissions to discuss these issues with me today. In our studio again is Dr. Chris Imafidon. He is a consultant to presidents and monarchs and has been described as the father of the brainiest family in Britain. Dr. Chris, you're very welcome to our studio. Thank you for, for having me. We have a lot to talk about today. Thank you. Yes. Now, if you are a parent considering private education for your child, the Independent School Show is a must-attend event. The London Show takes place on the weekend of the 8th and the 9th of November 2014, and this year will be the largest show ever with over 200 of the finest and best schools from nursery to sixth form. Dr. Chris, taking a look at the Independent Schools Show, how can any parent get the best for their child via this show? Every parent should be aware of the fact that the best gift you can give any child is education. If that is the case, having to read league tables, check websites, is not enough to give you a feel of the school. You want an opportunity to be able to see the head teacher, discuss with who is in charge of admissions, probably discuss with other teachers. And there's no other opportunity anywhere that I know that gives you the opportunity to see many schools in one location at the same time. So that's the reason why going on the show will be always an invaluable guide for parents that are considering a choice of school for their children. Why private education in the first instance? Because we have different children, different preferences, different personalities. Each time I hear someone say, oh, uh, my school days were very horrible, it means, what, what it really tells me is that the right choice was not made for that particular individual. So if that individual was given the right choice, because it's a wide variety. In the independent sector, you have boarding, full boarding, you have flexi boarding, you have co-ed, you have single ed, you have rural, you have urban. So until you are able to explore that and say, this is my son, this is what he will prefer, or this is my daughter, this is what she will like. And the formative years must be a well-guided choice. If, if you take a gamble on it, it means the child will not have another opportunity of being a child and therefore another opportunity of being able to be formed and come out to be the personality that you want them to be as adults. And some of these schools are specialized schools in particular areas, so the child can actually go to the school that the parent feel has, uh, the child has an interest in. That's right. You might have two boys, one may be pro rugby and the other one pro football, or one may be pro music, particular string instruments, and the other one pro, pro wind instrument. So you want to find a school that will give him or her the best nurturing environment so that that talent that was deposited in that child is not only identified, but is nurtured and developed up to the point where it really blesses everybody in the community, it blesses the school, blesses the nation, blesses the home. But if we have a school, for instance, that focuses on sports and your son is very musical, mm -hmm. and then you put it, that becomes a mismatch. It's like a, a round peg in a square hole. So you, you don't want that for any child because uh, destroying the talent in the child, it's, it's not the best for the child or, or for the family or in fact for the society at large. And for parents who want to attend this uh, show, what should they do? Or, or you can come on our website, there's a link, and if you follow us on social media, we'll give you a link. There's a free registration, you just click on it, they ask for your name, your email address, probably your telephone, a few demographics, and then that's free. You, you, you get it uh, free once you register ahead of time. If you're hoping to register on the day, then there might be a fee, but I think it's best for every, every, every family, really, not just parents, every family. Go with other siblings so, so that you can discuss as a family with different schools and see what would be most appropriate for for your son or your daughter. And are there opportunities for scholarships? Oh, boundless opportunities for scholarships. So if a child can excel in any area or has proven in their talented area or represent the county in any sports or plays in any music up to a particular level, for, for instance, if you're able to hit grade five uh, in year six or hit grade seven in year 11, you're considering musical scholarship. So the opportunities for musical scholarship will be available to everyone and there'll be copies of the individual school prospectuses that you can pick, look at, and even take home. Now, the half term is over, but parents are wondering, what can I still do to help my child achieve 
ace uh, in all the subjects. So how can we improve exam scores, not just during half term or Christmas holidays, but during school term as well? The, the half term provides an opportunity for self-reflection to see what did, I, what did I do so well or what did I do not so well? Because once you are able to find out what you did very well, you continue that. What you didn't do too well in, you, re, you, re, you come back and look at other alternatives, other ways of pursuing that. So if, for instance, you started a new subject this academic year, you've had the first half of the term, you can now say, oh, how do I best get resources? Where do I get, where, where do I look at the best resources? Or if you have a new teacher, a new personality delivering an old subject, you want to see what adjustments can you make to be able to get the best from this particular teacher. And um, if you were not able to make this half term, sadly, there's going to be another end of term opportunity for us to review and reflect because people never do that. They just continue in the same way. And so if you are lagging behind in a subject, that lag extends over a period of time. So you don't want that. You want to be, be, be able to be sure that you catch up in the area that you might be lagging behind in. And then you overtake once you know you are confident in your new technique of learning that particular subject. And in the academic calendar, today is regarded as one of the most important days for years 6 and 11. Why? Um, today happens to be the deadline. The 31st of October is always the deadline. So please go online to your LEA website to show preferences for the schools that are available to use. One, two, if you've already passed the grammar school, you've already seen your result, you must include that right now in the common, so-called common application form. And we're so happy that everything is now online and you can capture your screen and then save it so that if there's any uh, come back or saying that your phones were not in on time, you can show proof that you were able to submit it today. That's for year six, going to year seven, making a transition to secondary school and wanting to look at the state um, sector in terms of provision. Uh, for the year 11, most of the top independent schools like Bancroft School in, in Essex will want your forms, their forms to be filled back and submitted today. So if you're going for normal admissions, you need to send it today. If you're going for scholarships, if you're going for any of the mistested bursaries, you have to send it today. So that's, that's why it's a big deadline. And then if you're applying for the Fulbright scholarship, today also happens to be the big day. So it's a big day in the uh, education calendar. Make sure your forms are in because a lot of people miss out every year on the technicality of late application. You don't want to put yourself in that position. Even if you are not sure, still send your forms in. If you decide later, you can withdraw. But if you don't put it in at all, and then you now decide later to join, you are now severely disadvantaged because your forms mm -hmm. will be deprioritized, and they'll consider the ones that applied first. If there are spaces available, and in most good schools, there are never any spaces available, then they consider you. And I don't want anybody to be in that disadvantaged position. And talking about admissions, why do we still have um, very few pupils from deprived backgrounds getting into top universities? It, it, it's very sad because we operate purely a, a meritocracy. It should be whoever is able to score the highest marks should go to the top schools. But however, Indeed. The admissions process makes it Im literally impossible for a lot of children from a particular socioeconomic group to even be aware of the opportunities available in terms of applying to top universities. So if you want to apply to top universities, one fundamental truth, for instance, is that the deadline for applying to the top university comes earlier, in October. Meanwhile, all the other university comes up in January. So you have almost a three-month uh, a pace for you to work. So you, that means you have to work ahead of every other person to be able to meet the earlier deadline. If you're thinking of uh, musical scholarship, choral scholarship, it's even one month earlier. It's in September. So you can see why a lot of uh, poor people that have not, or people from uh, uh, deprived socioeconomic background, that have not had any family history of making these applications will be left out in the court. Mm. And like it said, it's not just the saying, knowledge is power. The same my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. If you don't have this knowledge, you are unable to make the application. If you are unable to make the application, you are not even considered at all. So your ability or that meritocracy that we all believe in on this particular in instance falls down because a bright boy that is not aware of the opportunity may not make any application. And somebody that is weaker but is aware or has a sibling that has been there before makes an application and then gets in. 
So that's, that's, a con that's one of the contradictions of the, of the system. And that's why parents ought to always tune into programs like this that can inform them and empower them to be able to make the right choices for their boys and girls. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris. Well, we'll be taking a break now. When we come back, we'll be talking about child prodigies. Stay tuned. a friend and grow your world on UCOS. Use your phone to sign up on www.ucos.com if you haven't done so already. Mobile step one. Click here to open menu. Then click here to invite friends. Mobile step two. Invite by email directly or import from your webmail. Mobile step three, enter your friend's emails. On webmail, just sign in and click accept. To start importing contacts. When using an Android phone, start here. Then select friends to invite. Or just add them. If they're already on UCOS. When using an iPhone, start here and select friends to invite. When using a Blackberry, click menu, then start here. And select friends to invite. Simple as that. UCOS. Connect, share and play on the go. Sign up now. It's fun, it's new, it's exciting and it's what you have been waiting for. The all new Love World TV mobile app is now out. It's the world at your fingertips. With amazing discoveries just one touch away. It's television made easy. Watch your favourite programmes on the go, from news, current affairs, discussion and interactive programmes. With the Love World TV mobile app, you can report live news from on-site locations, wherever and whenever, by uploading your photos and news on the iReporter. Share your victory stories on iTestify. Receive the latest Pastor Chris Live posts on the go. Send shout outs to a loved one. Get up to date news. You can also make your partnership contributions on the app. And a whole lot more. So, what are you waiting for? Get your app today. Now available on Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Love World TV Mobile. Get it, explore it, share it.
Welcome back to Education Talk, and now we'll be talking about child prodigies. The current pass rate for GCSE math for 16-year-olds is just about 43%, but there are those that have defied the odds. Children only half that age have not only taken the exams but passed. These are child prodigies. We have one in our studio today with us. His name is Israel Adiboga. Israel, you're very welcome to our studio. Thank you. How are you? Fine. How old are you? Nine years old. You're nine, which means you passed the GCSE maths when you were just eight. Yes. And you had a great C in it. Yes. How did you pass? I passed by stud by learning hard and by trying the best I could. Hmm. You tried the best you could. And what materials did you use to help you? Well, I I used the maths manual and manga high. And those are the books you used? Yeah. And Dr. Chris, the maths manual is the book that was written uh, specially for kids it, who are gifted when it comes to maths. Yes, and more importantly, how old were the people that wrote the maths manual? Around 16. Yeah. Uh, so you, you find out that if you have a student writing or communicating to another student, the language is very non-threatening. And you know that there is no barrier in terms of communication between that age, unlike when you have a book written by an adult, adult yeah. talking down to a five or six year old. So uh, the, the books were also written by other prodigies that also passed the GCSE at the age of uh, the primary school age. And it's always quite useful for us to understand that if we are involved in communication, it's far more important that we simplify our language and remove as much jargon as possible. So the kids were able to actually write the manual in a language that every child can understand. Yes, and, and you can accept achieved. the content. You can accept mm -hmm. the content without necessarily saying, oh, I need to go and find out what Pythagoras is. Mm -hmm. um, it's a mouthful. You say, okay, I can look at triangles and the triangle man, three three sided objects, and be able to explore that. So, 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 um, what do you think of people that always say that maths is difficult? Well, the only thing that makes it difficult for them is because they look at it as a stressing piece of work instead of how I look at it as a game. It's a game. Ah. So, ah, that, that, that. so that's the difference. You look at it as a game. Oh. Yeah. It's a game to you. Yeah. So you enjoy it. That's what yes. it means. Interesting. Which means the book is actually written like a game. So kids play games of maths. That's right. That's right. So you're sending reinforcements to the students without them making a conscious effort that they are learning. And in that way, it's fun to them. It's just like another game. You play against me, now I'm a win, and you play against me, again, I'm a lose. And that is something that goes intuitively. The more you do that, the better you are. And repetition is the mother of learning. And, and you were able to enjoy that, weren't, weren't you? Yes. So it wasn't difficult for you at all? No. I know your parents are Christians, which means you're also a Christian, because you, you've told me before we came on air that you are a Christian. Yes. Now, how has your Christian faith helped you? Well, because I've always believed in God, I've always believed in myself, and I've never doubted what I've been capable of. You've never doubted what you've been capable of? No. And I understand you have some scriptures that you always have with you which inspire you. Yes. And which is that? The one, John 3.16, mm -hmm. and the one that says that I can do anything with the help of God. Yes. Really? Yes. And that's what's inspired you, because you have confidence in yourself. Yes. Now, what advice do you want to give to other children your age who are thinking of doing very well in maths? Well, if you want to do very well, all you have to do is think of it in a different way. Okay. Which is the way of games. Games, that's yeah, right. That's the way of games. Now, Dr. Chris, looking at this, he passed GCSE maths with a great C at just eight years old. Don't you think the style of learning in which he's learned is what our schools should be adopting? Because we have just only 43% pass rate among 16 year olds in the country. Yeah, which is a tragedy because that. Uh, 43 that were able to pass the exam translates to over 300,000 boys and girls at a disadvantage because they are unable to do anything serious without having the maths and English credit. So even if they wanted to excel in one or two other subjects, they are unable to progress as other, 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 other children. So really, the techniques available are 
universally. Students at, of any age can access the same materials. The Excellence in Education website has a lot of that on their website. So, and it's not something that you have to pay anything for. You only pay if you attend physically at any of their programs. So I, I, I feel very disappointed that in today's age, there's anybody that finds the subject hard when we know that it's a proven methodology for delivering the content in a very easy and non-threatening way. It's very some, sad. Some parents are actually not aware of this methodology. Uh, and therefore, the teaching establishment ought to reflect on how we are delivering the content and see how that can be used. It, because it's a simple principle. It's not age dependent. Anybody that understands anything of a particular age can easily transfer that knowledge to their peers. We learn much more from our peers than we learn from our teachers. So we should be able to roll this out and apply the principles that the Excellence in Education program uses every year in every subject. So it's not just maths, in science, in languages, in computer, in technology. So it's, it's not subject specific. So we should roll it out across the curriculum. But old habits, they say die hard. So there are very few people that are willing to jettison what they've used over the years. Yeah, the difference here is that Israel Mas learned it from his pairs. Yes. And that's why. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the maths manual. This is the maths manual that you used, Israel. Yes. This is it. This is it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Is this free? If parents want this maths manual for their kids, how can they get copies? If they go on the Excellence in Education website, they can download an e-copy, uh, a sample chapter, or they can get the whole content for I think it's about nine pounds or some uh, um, very affordable uh, amount. So what, what I'm hoping that any single parent that finds maths threatening, you can also use it as a guide to assist your boy or your girl to their homework. So you don't have to be a mathematician. The knowledge of it is so made easily assimilatable and digestible that a non-specialist can read it and then support their boy or girl. That, that's another um, beauty of having mass manual written in the way it is written or the exercises at the end of the chapter are also set that way. And the answers are right at the book of, at the end of the book. So nobody should really think mass is a problem this day. We should be able to sell through. We have enough technology to understand it. Israel, you passed GCSE maths with a grade C just at the age of eight. Everyone would think that you are all about maths, nothing else. Do you have hobbies at all? Yes. You do? So what else do you do? I like to play football and basketball. Mm. And, I liked, and I like musical instruments. Really? And which musical instrument do you play? A cello. Wow. This is just like every other <laughs> child, yeah, really, that's right. just like every other child. Mm -hmm. But the difference is what you did, uh, Israel, let me ask you this question. Does it have to be a child who is gifted in maths that should be able to do this, or any child can do it? Any child can do it. Any child can do it. That's interesting. Why do you say so? Because the only thing holding them back is the fact that they don't believe in themselves. Wow. Wow. I'm wow. impressed with that. Wow. That's now. profound. I didn't pass yeah. GCSE maths with a great C at the age of eight. No, neither did I. I didn't even <laughs> attempt it. No, 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 no. The opportunities are available yeah. to this generation. So for parents out there who are wondering, how can I help my child pass GCSE maths? I mean, send emails to educationtalk at logotv.co.uk or you can log on to the Excellence in Education website and get more information. Now, Dr. Chris, just before you go, what advice do you have for parents? Because the parents are the primary, you know, they are the caretaker of their children. They have the primary responsibility when it comes to the education of their child. What advice do you have for them? Understand that the whole educational landscape will change from time to time. And because you are not a professional, you might be intimidated by the changes. So what you need to do is get involved in different activities that educate parents, one. And there is nothing new that they are going to be taught. If you put your mind to it, you should be a co-learner. You should journey with them. You should find out how best to learn and be able to resource their learning habits. If they are visual, then don't think about buying books as a first uh, instance, get videos. If they are audio, get CDs. So let all of us as parents be flexible to the needs of our students, our, our children, and believe that there's a genius in every one of them. You're starting with the, start with the founding principle that every child is born with some deposits of gifts and talents in them. 
you know, why you were speaking, Israel was nodding, which means he quite understood what you were saying when you said if they are visual, give them videos, if they are auditory, Audio. give them audio, yeah. which means you know the different types of learning. Your parents would have taught you that, and that really helped you. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of difference, you know, when the parents can understand the educational needs of the child. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good thing. And also watch programs like the uh, Education Talk, because their parents got to know about the excellence in education program by watching TV. Program. Yeah, yeah, program. So if you think that you know it all, then you shut yourself down in one little corner. If you think you have inhibitions, therefore you can't know it, then you shut yourself in one corner. You've got to be open-minded and know that the generation that we had previ in previous years is going to change because the facilities, the tools, the technologies available to us now were never available to our parents or grandparents. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do better. And the best way to do it is collaborating with the schools, even if the schools are, obs are obstructive, get hold of the facilities, get hold of the information. Uh, subscribe. It's a free subscription to the Excellence in Education program. Yeah. I think every, every parent should subscribe. Every to that. parent should subscribe. Uh, Israel, tell us, what did you do this half term? This half term, I've been spending it with EIE, trying to learn more, so I can prepare for my A levels. Whoa! Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he's preparing for A levels. <laughs> yeah. A level maths. Well. Yes. At the age of nine? Yes, it's possible. The, the, like he said, the only thing that is holding us back is our limiting beliefs. But some of us hold this belief, oh, I'm not good for languages. I'm not very good at learning language. When really, if you change your methodology of learning, you'll be good at it. I'm not good at maths. I'm not good at... Uh, when people start telling me I'm not good at something, what you're really trying to tell me is that you're putting a limit on what you can be, on what you can achieve. If you take it outside and then try, and then come back again, review your attempt, and then try again, you find out that persistence always gives us results beyond what we think or dream about. What I'm really impressed about is that every child can achieve this. It doesn't have to be a child that is naturally gifted, in quote, That's right. you know, in maths. Every child can actually achieve this, and you can be wherever you want to be, according to Israel, if only you believe in yourself. That's right. That's right. One last word, Israel, for those at home. Just before we go, what do you want your mates to know? Never doubt what you're capable of. He keeps saying that. Never doubt. Yeah, that's Never doubt yeah what it starts from there. Of. As a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is he. Is, that's what. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris. And Israel, thank you so much for coming on this program. We look forward to having you again after your A-levels. And probably you might play some music for us with your cello. Oh, yes. Oh, yes? I look forward to that. Okay. <laughs> and thank you so much, Dr. Chris. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Viewers, this is Education Talk, and here we review various issues on education in the country. And today we've been looking at child prodigies. For parents out there, you're wondering, I want my child to come up with a great C in maths at just the age of eight in GCSE maths or A levels. You can send emails to educationtalk at lovotv.co.uk. It is possible, and as a child prodigy has said, it depends on if that child believes in what he's capable of. Stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs.